with Michael, how might some of the Republican resistance to McCarthy play out? Is there a possibility of him not securing enough votes to become Speaker of the House? Yes, Kevin McCarthy might well not become Speaker of the House, or maybe more likely he'll become Speaker of the House and we will see him on one side of the, uh, the screen and a head of lettuce at the other side of the screen and speculation on which is going <laughs> to last longer. Uh, that really could happen because, you know, uh, you heard Mike Pence say a win is a win. That's absolutely absurd and ridiculous. Midterm elections, as you know and as Molly knows, uh, that's when a president's party usually loses a lot of seats. Classic example, 1994, Bill Clinton's Democrats lost eight Senate, Senate seats net and 54 seats in the House. Compare that to the results the other day. Uh, you know, the Democrats might even improve their position in the Senate, are down in the House by a few seats. And the result is that Kevin McCarthy or whoever else has the ordeal of being the next Republican speaker is going to be hostage to a few extremists in his party, same as you oftentimes see in very vigorous parliamentary systems like Israel or Italy, and the result will be that even if he wanted to make deals with Joe Biden or come to the center, that is unlikely to happen, especially if you've got someone as weak as Kevin McCarthy is calling the shots. You know, Molly, I love to see you and Pelosi reunited. You recently wrote a piece for Time magazine entitled Nancy Pelosi reflects on the not quite end of an era, which seemed to me like a reference to the fact that even though she is stepping down from the speakership, she's choosing to remain a member of the House. I want wonder what you make of that decision and given how much you have studied her, what that could potentially look like. Well, it means that she's still going to be there and she's there as a resource if the new Democratic leaders uh, want her advice. You know, uh, as Michael's been laying out, it is always difficult for any congressional leader to have a very slim majority. Uh, but that has been Pelosi's situation for the past two years as the Democrats have had just a four or five seat majority. And nonetheless, she has managed to uh, pass multiple, you know, large packages of legislation through the House uh, and keep her caught is united. She is a very strong leader who has a lot of experience doing this. And of course, there are a lot of doubts about whether uh, Kevin McCarthy has those qualities, having gotten, you know, just 188 votes in his caucus election just the other day, when he's going to need 218 on the floor, and when a lot of conservatives have already said that they're not going to support him. So, you know, when I spoke to Speaker Pelosi right after she'd come off the floor of the House from having given that farewell speech, uh, but announcing that she'll still stay there, uh, what she said is she she does want the caucus to work its will. She doesn't want to be what she described as the mother-in-law in the kitchen saying, that's <laughs> not how my son likes the stuffing. That's not how we make it in our family. Uh, so she says she's not going to be a backseat driver. But, you know, anyone who's who's followed and studied Speaker Pelosi uh, knows that she, she has a lot of opinions about the way things ought to go. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, she, she doesn't want to serve as sort of a shadow speaker. But I wouldn't be surprised if the, she's there as sort of a resource uh, for Leader Jeffries and his deputies as they as as they grapple with these very difficult decisions going forward.